Our New Testament text this morning comes from John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 35. Listen now to God's word to us this morning. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then so that we might see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. I am so excited. One of my most favorite days of the year is just around the corner. I love Thanksgiving. And this year it's going to be extra special because I'm not cooking. I'm already imagining the variety of aromas that are mingling together. They tantalize my taste buds with anticipation of the deliciousness, that deliciousness that is to come. And one of my favorite parts of the meal is yummy, fresh-baked, warm bread that's slathered with butter. In our gospel text this morning, Jesus turns this simple dietary item into a metaphor about his role in our spiritual quest. Bread, a common staple that is found in nearly every home in every part of the world. Typically, when we talk about bread in worship, We associate it with communion. Jesus is the bread broken for us. And then as we move through our worship, we pray every Sunday, give us this day our daily bread. For many, especially in our culture, eating is considered a pastime. Think about it. We eat when we celebrate. We eat to forget. We eat to remember. We eat to feel comforted, to be sociable, to be empowered. We eat to survive. No matter how smoothly sophisticated, technologically advanced, intellectually gifted, or artistically inclined we may be, or may not be, All human beings, all God's living creatures, must eat to survive. We must take in the nourishment of the right kind in order to keep our bodies healthy and functioning and and able to maintain life. And it's the same for our spirits. 
Perhaps that's why, of all the images and metaphors that Jesus uses to speak of himself, of his mission, of his sacrifice, the two most universally accepted and meaningful still remain bread and water. Today, just as they did 2,000 plus years ago, Jesus, as the bread of life and as living water, suggests to our hungry, thirsty bodies and spirits that the bread and water Jesus provides is the basic sustenance necessary for all of life, all of life, physical and spiritual. So when we put bread and water together and we kind of mention it in the same sentence, it sort of sounds like prison fare, doesn't it? But bread and water happens to be the universal soul food for all of God's children. While a sumptuous turkey dinner fills our bellies and warms our, our bodies, the only diet that can feed our starving spirits and fill our empty insides is the food that endures for eternal life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Wow. Can you imagine never experiencing hunger or thirst? And here's the thing. When we think about this, it's both easy and hard to attain this. The crowds in today's readings who follow Jesus to the other side of the Sea of Tiberias in order to receive more free food, well, they sort of had trouble understanding how different the sustaining elements Jesus offered them were from ordinary bread and water. After the crowd compares Jesus' gift of bread and water and talks about the gift of bread from Moses with the manna in the wilderness, Jesus happens to do two things. First, he corrects their faulty memory, reminding them that it was God not Moses, who provided the manna. And then Jesus distinguishes God's true bread from heaven from anything that might be slathered with butter and jam. The metaphor of Jesus, the bread of life, is that he meets hungering humans where we think we are empty in our bellies. But then he points us to where our real emptiness lies, our spirits. You might be wondering, well, that's nice, but what's all this talk about bread? Here's the thing. With the exception of a few unleavened varieties of bread, if you've ever baked bread or been in a place where fresh bread is baking, you know that yeast is the life-giving ingredient which transforms basic elements into a fragrant, warm loaf of yummy bread. A tiny one-celled organism that grows and metabolizes its own food with great speed. Yeast organisms work. They work in the dough, slightly fermenting and releasing gases so that the bread begins to take form and shape and rise and grow, as it were. Jesus, the bread of life, is energized in each and every one of us by divine yeast, by the Holy Spirit of the living God who sent Christ to be among us, to be for us, to be in us and to benefit wholly and fully from the bread of life we need to keep our our lives our our spirits our own selves yeasty we need to remain vital and ever growing okay so what can we do to be yeasty to create yeast 
in our own spirits? How can our own spiritual lives be yeasty, that is, vital and ever-growing? Well, we can practice using an acronym, YEAST, Y-E-A-S-T, for our own personal and spiritual attitudes. So let's begin. Think yes. Yes, I need this divine yeast in my life. I need this bread of life to help my spirit grow, to remain vital as a child of God. Yes, I know that I can do all things through Christ, the one who will keep my spirit yeasty, growing, and constantly transforming in all situations in life. And when we respond yes to that bread of life, guess what? We'll be energized. There's your E. Why is it that that energizer bunny, he's so cute, keeps going and going and going? and is always going somewhere else on the night the lights go out and you have to dig out a flashlight. Unlike batteries, a properly maintained yeast colony, especially divine yeast, will indeed keep you going and going and going and going, for you will indeed be energized. Have you ever made sourdough bread using a sourdough starter? The sour bread dough starter is a combination of yeast cultures and water and flour. Very simple, very basic. You dip out what you need for your day's biscuits or bread or pancakes. Then you give the rest of the starter that's left in the container a quick stir. You add a little bit of flour and water and you fling it back in the fridge. In pioneer days, women treasured their starter and nourished it along day after day, year after year. Sometimes one starter was passed from mother to daughter to granddaughter. That's perpetual energy. That's the kind of energy being passed along from the bread of life that can be a part of our own spirits. Sometimes something that we hold on to, we nurture, and we pass along from generation to generation. In order to be continually fed by the bread of life, we need to be in constant touch with the source of life's true energy living out of stored power of the Holy Spirit enables us to be fed by Christ's gift at any time we need it. We can access this always available power reserve in lots of different ways. For some of us, prayer, prayer is what brings us closest to God's spirit and to God's love. For others, music, Music opens our spirits, opens our souls, and sets it resonating within us. Still for others, contemplating works of art form within us prayers that enable us to reach out and grab that gift of life. My friends, I encourage you to find your own way of accessing this energy, this energy of the bread of life. And in doing so, you will never go hungry. The crowds in today's texts were seeking. They were seeking the bread of life, and all that they were really looking for was a free lunch. Jesus' words to them, his corrections and counsel were intended to make the hungering crowd search, search their own spirits for their true motives and desires. Likewise, when, when we feel filled up, 
filled up with power and contentment. Perhaps we should search our own spirits to make certain that we are feasting on what God provides and not what our own egos and selfish desires have cooked up. Finally, if we are indeed filling up on the bread of life, we should be able to trust. Trust in the Holy Spirit's presence and power in our lives. When our spirits are resting in trust, they can do anything. For we know, no matter where we go, no matter what the difficulties we may encounter along the way, a constant food supply is always at hand. The bread of life that Jesus provides is always guaranteed. Friends, on Thursday, as we celebrate one of my most favorite holidays, as we come together and celebrate Thanksgiving, we will sit down at tables surrounded by family and friends, perhaps laden with all sorts of yummy food items, including bread and water. We will give thanks for all of it, and rightly so. But let's be mindful remembering that we are indeed abundantly blessed. And the one constant that is in our lives, that one constant that we can always count on, is Jesus, our daily bread. For it is Jesus that sustains us. Jesus is the bread of life. As we partake of delicious physical bread on Thanksgiving, and perhaps yours too will be slathered with butter. We are bodily nourished and energized. As we partake of Jesus, the bread of life, his indwelling presence becomes the source of our yeastiness. Jesus is the nourishment and energy for our spiritual emotional, and yes, also our moral lives. So this year, moving forward, let's vow to make everyday Thanksgiving as we feast upon Jesus, our bread of life. Amen. <laughs>